Welcome back to the Strong Life Podcast. This is your host, Zach Evanish. Great Q&A. Uh, if you've been listening, I've been crushing the Q&A episodes. They help me keep the topic focused and helps you guys uh, listen quickly. So we're going to do a screen share if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, you could always subscribe. Uh, pretty much all my uh, social handles are Z Evanesh, and uh, you could see... I mean, I was just looking on my YouTube. There are thousands of videos as I was updating a body weight training article. And so I went on my YouTube and just typed in body weight. Then I went on the Zach Evanish website and typed in body weight. And I think I had something like 30 plus videos on body weight, endless articles on body weight and calisthenics training. So, um, <clears throat> man, so much information and it's so expensive. It is free. All right, let's do a screen share here and uh, <clears throat> open up. All right, this question came in from David. We're going to maximize this so we could see it a little bit better. There we go. <clears throat> Zach, I appreciate all your content and passion. I have a question for you as I'm looking for some advices. He didn't say advices, which means, oh, this is Devin, not David, which means uh, Devin is not a diehard. You know, if you're going to reach out to me for advices, that's the only way we say it. Moving on, I am turning 33 this summer and I have been a strength coach the last 10 years. I currently work at a large high school. And I have been obsessed with the profession since I discovered it my senior year of college. I'm married with two boys, five and three years old, and we are expecting our third boy next month. That's amazing. I'm working on my second master's degree while in my first year at a new school. I'm the first ever strength coach, so I'm building it from scratch in a brand new facility. I just spent the last five years in the college sector, so it took a slight adjustment, as you know. And yes, I do know. I've spoken about that topic many times, the differences in, you know, coaching at the underground strength gym, private, coaching at Lehigh, Rutgers, and then I'm in my fifth year out of high school. Devin goes on to say, when you were in this point in your career, how were you able to manage your time to be a dad, husband, and coach? while also getting your training in and continuing in your education. To me, I just feel like I'm constantly failing at one of these buckets. Is it possible to keep them all full or do I need to lower my standards? I place on myself to be better overall, trying to live the code appreciated in ad advance. Devin, that's an amazing question. We're going to stop the screen share and uh, let's try to unpack this together. <clears throat> Number one, there's never a perfect balance. Uh, especially if you're an entrepreneur, there's always a time where we're doing more of something, not enough of the other thing. And I think what's great is you're taking inventory, you're looking at how you could improve, but what you don't want to do is beat yourself up over it. There's just times where you have to put in the work and then you need to find times, especially like in the summertime at the high school level, when you're not coaching as much, and then you could really maximize and spend time with the family. But then other things I did, uh, out of the gate and I still do it to this day all right I'm 48 and a half started doing this as soon as my uh, daughter was born was making breakfast for the kids I wake up pretty early it's not odd for me lately to wake up at 5 a.m maybe 5 30 um, <clears throat> I make a cup of tea I come downstairs I start doing some work 6 30 a.m I'm upstairs making the dogs breakfast making the kids breakfast heating up their lunch making sure I see the kids before they go and then um, one thing that was done when my kids were babies and I opened up the second underground strength gym here in Manasquan was I was so afraid of not being around my kids. My wife said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And what she did was our office was like transformed into a little play area for them. She got them two bean bags. She got them a nice TV. She got them all kinds of uh, board games and coloring papers. And so that was their little hangout time, except they would only be in there for a few minutes. Then they would come out and climb the rope. Okay. Then kids started learning their names and they'd say, Ethan, sit on this sled. And they'd push Ethan on the sled or uh, summer would come out and do the movement prep with us. And then, you know, kids would be walking on their hands and they'd be like, Ethan, come here. I'll hold your ankles. So they became part of the underground strength gym. 
And uh, I also adjusted my hours. When I opened up here in Manasquan, I got rid of my 7 p.m. time slot. So I was home by like 7.30 the latest. Finish at 7 p.m., do some cleaning up and uh, be prepared for the next day and get out of there. Um, and then every weekend is just family time. You know, today on Sundays, I do some work to prep for the week ahead. Sometimes I would work Saturday morning, maybe until like 11 a.m. Then my wife would organize some sort of a outing for us. We would get the kids in the car and we would go to a farm or, or you know, we would go to a farmer's market or we would travel somewhere to another town and have lunch. So we spent a lot of time together and, and you know, you're going to have three kids. So you'll probably never feel like it's enough, <clears throat> but I would say this simplify and look at the things you're doing and get rid of the unnecessary. So, you know, as a business owner, if I learn more training information, which is the thing I'm passionate about, it's not making the underground strength gym better. I, I know this sounds wrong to a lot of people, but I don't need to learn a whole lot more training, maybe a little bit more on the speed and technology end of things, but that's not going to grow my business. At the high school, the training we implement or the training I implement is so, so simple. I found that by trying to use all kinds of variety and too much conjugate method and too much advanced stuff, I'm talking not even advanced. I'll go over a program with them and I'll, and we will have maybe pause squats or pause bench incorporated. When they go to squat and bench, 70% forget to pause. And so picking up on that, you know, you think you need to be so fancy, but you don't, you know, look at what Jim Wendler does with his training at the high school. It is ultra, ultra simplified, but it's effective and it's exactly what they need. Um, <clears throat> Yesterday, not yesterday, I'm sorry, Wednesday, for those of you watching here on um, YouTube, well, I threw out the other pages, but I was writing notes at a college exercise science and sports marketing networking event, and I mapped out what I would advise other coaches to do or this you know, younger generation of kids that are going for an exercise science major. I said... You know, you have some options here to grow. You have to be very careful of getting your next degree in exercise science, because from there you have a master's degree and you don't really differentiate yourself from other strength coaches. So from there, you really should just get a master's in physical therapy. OK, or you go and get your Ph.D. because people are going to judge you as such. If you look at the high performance directors they often have PhDs or they have decades of knowledge in exercise and technology. So that was kind of one angle I gave them. <clears throat> the other angle I spoke to them was what I just mentioned was you go from exercise science into physical therapy because you will be viewed as, quote unquote, just the strength coach. If you're a physical therapist, people elevate their uh, the way they judge you. That is really the truth behind it. I have athletes who nine months post ACL surgery can barely do lunges and they are sending in letters about um, from their physical therapist about the advanced program they're on. How advanced are they if they can't do walking lunges and they're preparing for football or wrestling? <clears throat> the other option I gave strength coaches who were getting their degree in exercise science, I said, if you really want to influence others, go get your MBA. Go get some sort of business administration degree because eventually you want to be kind of like the top of the umbrella, the tip of the spear, so to speak, where your knowledge and your decision making can be spread down to those that are doing the things. I have a master's in health education. There was no master's in exercise science in New Jersey back when I did this. I had no plan of being a strength coach. And even, you know, people ask me all the time, I tell them I have kids and coaches that don't want to listen to me. And so if you want to have influence as a strength coach, because you love it, climb the rankings and get a business degree. And then you could make decisions on scheduling, on strength coaches following through, on uh, physical therapists and other 
you know, athletic trainers working together. And as a person in the strength uh, realm, then you have um, also decision making over what is the schedule looking like. Now, oftentimes when you're at the top, your schedule's pretty busy, but I organized my schedule in life so that I'm not missing time with my kids. So right now my daughter's a junior, my son is a freshman. I'd say I make 95% plus of their sporting events. I don't really miss much. And um, all these decisions that I make, I write, I get a sheet of paper, okay? You could write a line down the middle. And just like I make decisions, what is best for the athlete, what is not, I decide, I, I just go down the side of paper, on all actions that are best for the athlete. I do the same thing with family. And so if I'm doing an action, doing something, and it is not a hell yes for the family, then the answer is no. Uh, that being said, you should read Derek Sivers book. I think it's called hell yeah or no, or hell yes or no. So that is how I make 99% of my decisions. If it does not benefit my family, as a hell yes, I'm not going down that road. I will not do that thing. And that has simplified my decision-making process and given me more time with family. Uh, and that being said, I'm not judging other people who don't want to spend time with kids. Uh, I know my buddy Joe DeSena posted something from an entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur, and she said she spends 20 minutes a day with her kids. She's like, well, how much more time do they need with me? That would never sit right in my heart even if I was making a million dollars. Now, some people, they will trade money and time in certain years of their life so they have more freedom in later years of their life. You're young. I'm 48. It's, you know, I'm not going back to college to get my MBA. Uh, but the decisions I make, if I'm going to get another strength and conditioning job or ways that I'm growing my business, they have to be beneficial for my family. So, Devin, I hope that helps you out, my friend. For everybody listening and watching, I want you to do a couple of things. Go to ZachStrength.com, pick up the free strength training courses. We have updated and upgraded them. That's number one. Number two, you have a question like this, respond to my newsletter. That's the free Strong Life Insider. Number three, lots of links below here in YouTube as well as on Apple and Spotify. Those are all the resources we have available for you, whether you're you know, men over the age of 35 looking for strength training, strength coaches who need certifications, who need business courses. All of that is linked up. If you want to do a business consultation with me, that's what I do when somebody sends me a message and says, can I pick your brain? I just find that people don't respect or value free information. And again, is it a hell yeah for me to spend time with somebody that's free for them and now I'm not spending time with family or working on my business that puts my family in a better position. So I've learned to say no to those, can I pick your brain type meetings? That's also why I have certifications and membership website, because that's where people can pick my brain. They have proven that they've got skin in the game. And then of course, links to my social are below. I mean, she's thousands of YouTube videos for you guys to watch and, uh, People have to be willing to research to get those answers. I've answered questions like this on family and balance. So my answers have changed as I've gotten older and, uh, you know, life has evolved. So that's it, team. I'm out of here. Have an awesome day. Crush the five-star reviews for me on Apple. Help spread the word on the Strong Life Movement. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.